Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah, and this is Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health come together. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And a big thank you to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you being here with me. In today's video, we are doing a second Unreal Dollar Tree Jenga Block Bowl. And I think this one is even cooler than the first one. So you're gonna wanna grab your Dollar Tree Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks for this even more unreal DIY. I'm excited and you should be too. So let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I just have to say I did try the instant coffee method of staining my tumbling tower blocks for this project that was recommended to me by multiple subscribers and that's just a ton of instant coffee mixed in with hot water in a bowl which I left soaking for about three hours then drained and dried and I loved it. Thank you so much. Not only were the blocks gorgeous, but they smell amazing if you like coffee, which I do, but they smell great. So I thank you all so much for that. Okay, so my coffee stained Jenga blocks are thoroughly dry and there's a lot of them if you're going to do the math. I think I used about 189 blocks to complete this project, but I probably stained about 200 or so just to be safe. And as I said before, it's just instant coffee soaked Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks. That's how I made these. I used this bowl as a template and this particular bowl is about 11 inches in diameter, but you could use another size and just adjust your number of blocks accordingly. I started by laying the bowl upside down on my table. Just to interject, the DIY that we're doing is an offshoot of a DIY I did last month of this Django block bowl and you guys seem to really like it a lot. So this hanging bowl we're making now is gonna be assembled in a very similar way, but the end result will be different as you'll see. So I'm starting this project in what will be the middle of our Jenga block bowl and this project has 13 Jenga blocks in the middle and the first thing I do is try to space out the 13 blocks as evenly as possible um, around the template bowl. The second row that we're going to do is also 13 blocks which we're going to glue one block in between the two blocks underneath it and we're going to be using all wood glue. To do this i'm using specifically the dollar tree super glue wood glue um, because i think it has a really strong hold let me know in the comments which glue you think is best specifically for the dollar tree jenga blocks i'm really curious what everybody else is using now the third row of the project is also the same as the first two where you're using 13 blocks again you're going to glue each block down between the two blocks beneath it this will give us three rows of 13 blocks which is the middle of our hanging bowl project now i'm on the fourth row of the project and instead of 13 blocks we're going to be gluing down 12 blocks and each row after this one will be one less block than the row before it. So you start that on the fourth row. You have three rows of 13 and your fourth row is going to be 12 blocks. Then we're starting on the fifth row and we're still using one less block than the row before. So the fifth row is going to be using 11 blocks. But also starting in this fifth row, we're going to begin staggering our blocks as we glue them down. And what I mean by this is that this row is glued starting at the center of the blocks beneath it, causing a staggering effect. And this is what makes our bowl start to have a bowl shape and sort of rounds it off. It's easier if you see what I'm doing rather than listening to what I'm saying. It's really pretty simple. So the sixth row is 10 blocks and still staggered from the row beneath it. And keep in mind, when you start to stagger the blocks, you should give the project some time to set in between each row because the glue needs a little time to dry and hold your pieces in place. And also just to make the whole project sturdier as you work. On to the seventh row and we're now going to use nine blocks followed by the eighth row using eight blocks, the ninth row using seven blocks, the 10th row is going to use six blocks, and the 11th row is going to use five blocks. 
the 12th will have four and the 13th row will have three blocks and that is where we will stop this side of the hanging bowl and basically we're going to turn the project over and repeat the same thing to form the other side of the bowl. So I flipped the project over and just a suggestion that you have the project leaning on a bowl or something like that. So that way there's no extra pressure on your freshly glued blocks and less of a chance for any pieces to break off. So what we're looking at is the middle of the hanging bowl, which again is 13 blocks around. Remember from before we have three rows of 13. So for our purposes, technically we are starting this side with row number four, which will be a row of 12 blocks, one less than the 13, glued in line with the row beneath it. So speeding up our video here, we are repeating what we did on the other side. We put 12 blocks on row number four in line with the blocks beneath it. And then beginning with row number five, we will use 11 blocks and we will begin the staggering effect by gluing the row of 11 blocks down in the middle of the block beneath it. The staggering continues in row number six with 10 blocks, row seven with nine blocks, row eight with eight blocks, row nine with seven blocks, row 10 with six blocks, row 11 with five blocks, row 12 with four blocks, and our last row being row number 13 with three blocks. And that will be the completion of this side of our Django block hanging bowl. I feel like the staggered pattern with the Django blocks could work for other projects. Like, I'm wondering what other rounded type decor projects could be done with these. I definitely have to give this some thought. Let me know in the comments if there's some kind of challenge project with Jenga blocks that you would like to see me try and do or try and fail as the case may be either way. But I feel like the possibilities are kind of endless, don't you think? Just a quick thank you to you guys for all of your support and I was floored by the interest people had in my first Jenga block DIY bowl from last month and I had seen some very modern and vintage looking bowls for sale online that people had made out of other wood blocks and that's where I got the idea to try and replicate that using the Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks. I know that other crafters online have made hanging planters with the Jenga blocks. I saw some really great huge teardrop shaped ones around, but I was really going more for a bowl with this project that we're working on now. I really feel like we've achieved that here. Now I also glued two sets of Jenga blocks together. Um, it's two sets of two Jenga blocks together off camera and I glued them to the bottom of the bowl because I like the way these bowls look with a little bit of height to them. But if you planned on actually hanging the bowl, which you can, you wouldn't need to put the legs on there. That's really up to you. And this is how my even more unreal Dollar Tree Jenga block hanging wood bowl turned out. I love everything about this. I love the color from the instant coffee staining. I love the pattern that the wood blocks have when you see this from the sides and from the front. I don't know why, but I do get a major fall vibe from this bowl. And I'm definitely seeing this on a Thanksgiving or holiday table surrounded by greenery and pine cones and all the fall accessories. This bowl can be hung on a wall, as long as you're not filling it with anything that heavy, but I love it standing on its own. I think you could style this bowl as rustic, maybe even a beach nautical look in the summer with a nice driftwoodish color stain on the wood. I'm seeing shells and, you know, all kinds of things in there. I think you could also do a more modern feel if accessorized that way. I think if styled well, this could be farmhouse as well. It's so versatile that I, I don't wanna label it. It's whatever you want it to be. 
who couldn't use a little bit more of that in your life? I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY, and if you would like to see more DIYs, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.